Hi everyone, my name is Emily Teague. I am a fashion and portrait photographer based in Brooklyn, New York, and today we get to talk about framing and composition. Composition is a massive subject that can feel endlessly deep if you start diving down that beautiful path. But for this episode, I'm going to be keeping things fairly simple and basic. You can think of composition as everything that's arranged within the frame. So you can organize and arrange your elements to make the image more aesthetically pleasing, or if you wanna take it a step further with storytelling, you can also use composition to convey a message or evoke an emotion. Framing and composition can be more than just an aesthetic choice, it can also be psychological. Our subconscious perceives different shapes with different connotations. I also talked about this in a previous episode I did with Adorama on how to find your personal style, but for a few examples on connotations of shapes, Triangles can represent power and strength. They are defiant and bold, they feel more aggressive. Whereas round shapes like circles can feel more comforting and positive, they're non-threatening, they can feel friendly or portray a sense of security. And then there's squares and rectangles that are sturdy, they feel balanced. Think a less aggressive strength than triangles, but still strong and stable. So we can play with psychology, but of course we can also play with what's aesthetically pleasing too. And you might have an amazing model, location, lighting, props, but if you don't know how to compose your elements in the frame, your photo is likely gonna fall a little short. So fortunately, we've got some guidelines to creating compositions that look nice. And I like to use the word guidelines instead of rules sometimes because rules can sound a little strict, like we must follow them. And it is a good idea to follow these guidelines and use them in your work. But like with anything within art, don't be afraid to experiment. And when you confidently know the rules, you can confidently break them too. In the meantime though, let's go over a few fundamental guidelines and tips. Starting with one you might be familiar with, the rule of thirds. So if you divide your frame up with two horizontal lines spaced evenly going across and two vertical lines evenly spaced going down, you get these nine equally sized rectangles or areas. You've also got four points where these lines intersect and these are called points of interest. Your shot is going to be more aesthetically pleasing to the viewer's eye if you can get your subject along these lines, particularly along the points of interest. So if I'm shooting a vertical portrait, I often like to have my model's eyes or face at one of these upper points of interest or close to it. Also pay attention to which way your subject is looking. If they're looking or facing off to the side, you want them to be looking towards whichever side has more room. If your subject is placed on the left-hand side of the frame, have them looking off to the right. If they're too close to the side and that they're looking towards, it can feel a little tense and create confusion for your viewer. Next up, breathing room. Try giving a little bit of space between your subject and the top and side edges. Just a sliver between your subject and the edge of the frame can feel tense. Imagine that they wanna be more comfortable in their little frame, so give them just a little bit more breathing room in there. And when giving breathing room, I would suggest keeping it somewhat close to equal in portraits, just a little bit above and to each side. Which leads me to watch your crop. In general, I advise against cropping at the hands, feet, below the knee, Essentially, don't cut off limbs at the joint or any little appendages like fingers, toes, ears. It just sort of creates this awkward, intense effect. And now, symmetry. Breaking our rule of thirds, let's instead look at the rule of symmetry. Symmetry is when two halves of the frame look the same and these balance each other out. Symmetry can feel really comforting, well-balanced, and create a sense of harmony and you can have your subject at the center of all of this. Let's talk about leading lines next. Leading lines can be human-made or natural lines like roads, fences, or rivers that lead the viewer's eye from one part of the composition to another, helping them explore the scene and focus on what you would like them to. Framing and composition is all about directing the viewer's eye. So when you're planning a photo shoot, look around for where those lines could be. They're everywhere. The last one I'll touch on for this episode is depth. The depth of field controls how much of your foreground and background is in focus. Using a shallow depth of field helps isolate your subject from the background. A deep focus is going to have both your subject and background shown with closer to equal detail. But depth of field can also be used in a way to change how depth is perceived in your images. This can help a viewer see what's more or less important in the frame and also how it relates to the subject. And that concludes this episode on a few basic rules and tips for composition and framing. Let me know in the comments below if this was helpful or if you'd like to see a more in-depth version or really whatever you would like to see. Let me know in the comments and I'll be checking them out. I'll see you all soon.